Hi there. I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about this uh, Geiger counter from EcoTest. This is the Terra P model. I think this is the cheapest model that they sell. This one is maybe 10 years old, uh, but I think the ones they're still selling are basically the same. I think they, they have exactly the same functionality. They certainly look the same. Uh, they sell on eBay for around $180. Although, if there's a, a nuclear incident, like it happened not too long ago at Fukushima, the price on these went up to around three or four hundred dollars. So, if you're thinking about getting a Geiger counter or dosimeter, it does make sense to get one before you need it, as opposed to when you need it. Just a little bit of forward thinking on that. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And it goes into the last mode it was in, which is the gamma dose rate. Now, in a moment, you should start hearing some clicking, which is just the background radiation. There we go. I live in Colorado. The background radiation here is just naturally a little bit higher, uh, usually around 0.12, somewhere in that range. And this will go up a bit as it stays on because it's averaging it over time. It also has a dosimeter. Now this is measured in millisieverts. Previously, it was in microsieverts per hour. This is showing the total accumulated dose while the Geiger counter has been turned on. Now, I just replaced the batteries in this 28 minutes ago, according to the time. So there's not much on the accumulated dose rate. Uh, that's the alarm clock. I don't know why you need an alarm clock on a Geiger counter, but sure, why not? So we'll go back to the gamma dose rate. Now on the back of this, it uses a couple AA batteries. This cover is over the Geiger Mueller tube. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take that plate off. It's kind of hard to do this one-handed. The plate has some uh, lead shielding on it, just a tiny little bit of lead intended to block out the beta radiation. So when the cover is on it, it works as a, a gamma radiation detector primarily. Gamma rays are, they're larger, they're, well, they're not really larger because they're actually electromagnetic waves, but they're easier to block than the beta particles. There's a, a very thin layer of mica over this just to protect the tube. I'm not gonna touch it because I don't wanna damage it. Um, now that I've taken that cover off, it is more sensitive to beta radiation, and you'll note it's starting to click a bit faster. Now, you'll see what I have in the background here. I've got a couple things. I'm gonna put this down. Hopefully the alarm won't go off. Put it that way. Uh, the first is a Fiesta Wear bowl. This is pre-World War II, and it's glazed with uranium. That's how they got that gorgeous orange glaze. The, the modern ones, they just can't seem to achieve that same color without using radioactive elements. And people just, I don't know, they get kind of sensitive about that stuff these days. Um, I think more dangerous about these earlier glazes was that they had lead in them. Uh, they've stopped doing that as well, at least we hope. But that would definitely be more dangerous if you were eating out of this, would be the lead getting into your food than any of the radioactive elements. So I've got that. I've also got a collection of trinitite here. Trinitite is the material that was formed during the initial atomic bomb testing in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Uh, that, that first bomb was called Trinity. When it was detonated, it pulled the sand up into the mushroom cloud and fused it together and it rained down and cooled and formed this material, which is called trinitite. Now, Shortly after they did the testing, that site was opened to the public and people went in and collected this stuff. Uh, I gather just shoveled it up. Um, and uh, one person, his name was Derek Bowers, supposedly had the largest private collection of this. And this came from his collection. I purchased it on eBay. It was authenticated to genuinely be trinitite. They set it off and did some testing on it and determined what radioactive elements were in there and how much they were, how much they had decayed. So it told them how old the material was. So we know this is genuine because 
they're actually they're counterfeiting this stuff now um, because it sells for so much it's it's hard to get you'll notice I'm handling this with my bare hands and the reason why is because as I'll show you here the radiation from it is pretty low I mean it, it, when you consider this came from an atomic bomb blast um, that was what 60 years ago uh, yeah, the alarm finally goes off on it, but it took a while. Um, I'll wait for the alarm to go back off here. It shouldn't take too long. Hopefully you can still hear me over the shrieking. Uh, the alarm is just indicating we've exceeded the, the safe daily limit for the exposure. My cat does not like that sound. Um, now, as I get closer to the Fiesta Wear Bowl, yeah, that thing goes off quickly. You'll see this Fiesta wear is actually much more radioactive than the Trenatite, which is probably surprising. Um, I'll just let that measurement go up and we'll say 24 microsieverts per hour. Let's put that cover back on there so this thing stops shrieking. It'll take a moment. There we go, it's already dropping off pretty quickly. You'll also see how quickly that dropped off just getting a few inches away from the bowl. Radiation drops off very quickly over distance, uh, which is why they say, you know, you can, you can shield yourself uh, pretty easily from uh, an atomic blast. Uh, you know, a few feet of dirt they figure would be enough to protect you. Um, I'll put it back here on the... Trinitite. Oh, it went to sleep. Uh, now I'm going to note that that's actually one of my favorite features of this is even while it's asleep, it's still monitoring. So if I put this in this bowl, it's still taking measurements in the background and lo and behold, the alarm goes off. And that's one of my favorite features about this because I can just stick this thing in a drawer and not think anything about it. And if there's ever a burst of radiation, the alarm would go off. Now, living in Colorado, we don't have any nuclear reactors around here, so there's not really a good reason for the alarm to go off, but it has actually done so. It's happened on a couple occasions when I've been at home. It's been a bit frightening, um, but I think what it's doing is it's picking up cosmic bursts from space. That does happen on occasion, and it's been enough to set off the alarm. Uh, it just goes off, and then, of course, you know, it's over in, in an instant, and so it just goes back off again. But uh, I really like that feature about this, and unless they've changed it, that feature is not available on their more expensive models like the Terra, um, which is black. The Terra P is one of the few I know that has that feature of monitoring in the background. So I think that's a really nice feature if you're looking to get a Geiger counter. Um, and really the only other function you might need aside from just getting the actual dose rate is that dosimeter, which gives you an accumulated dose. So if you do live in an area where there is some sort of nuclear accident, um, or if you're planning on traveling to maybe Japan uh, and you're concerned about your radiation exposure, you could pick up one of these Geiger counters. Uh, it's, it's more of a nerd tool, I've got to admit. I think the average person probably doesn't need one of these, but uh, which is good news. Um, but I really like getting things that measure, uh, and I don't know why. So I've kept this Geiger counter, and it still works great after all of these years. So I hope you enjoyed my brief video. I don't tend to do these things, so I apologize if I was kind of stumbling over my words. Um, but uh, thanks for watching.